Coming from level three and four, you'll be used to seeing the default directory structure of an app folder containing controllers, models, and views, along with a few others. When you open up Laravel 5's directory structure, it'll seem like L4 at first until you open the app directory. Then you may think you've accidentally downloaded the wrong framework. But fear not, you're in the right place. We'll start off with a look of what goes where, what has a new name, and then afterwards we'll take a look at what this means for namespacing and a few other things. Let's work our way from the top down, starting off with commands. These are not artisan commands you're used to from Laravel 4. These are the commands related to the command and command bus patterns. They can be run synchronously or asynchronously through the queue. If you are still not too sure what that means, I'll include a link to a video that Taylor Otwell made explaining how the command bus works. Next is the console directory, which contains its own commands directory. This is where you'll be placing your artisan commands now. The reason for this is that the console is considered an entry point for your application. And as such, it makes sense for your commands to be nested under that directly. We'll see another example of this shortly. The events directory is designed to hold any events you'd like to place into classes. While you're still free to define them as standalone closure objects in a bootstrap file or somewhere else, this provides users a clean and default location for them to be stored in class form. The exceptions directory serves two purposes. First, to contain your application's exception handler, and second, to give you a place to throw your app-specific exceptions. You certainly don't need to place all app-specific exceptions here, but for your top-level architecture, it might make sense for you. The handlers directory contains two additional subdirectories, commands and events. As you can guess, this is where you'll put your handler classes for commands and events. This is the default place to put them and where the system will expect to find handlers when they're defined. They're both optional since you can self-handle commands and events, and you can also put your handlers anywhere. But this is a good starting point. I'm going to skip HTTP for the moment because it's a little bit more involved. So moving right along, the providers directory is going to be the home for your application service providers. If you'll remember from L4, there was always a lot of confusion on where to put service providers, and users were always very hesitant to create them for fear that they were heavy-handed or maybe a little challenging. Now they're given first-class treatment in L5 to better promote their usage and demonstrate that they're nothing to fear and they're rather helpful for bootstrapping a library or some chunk of code for you. The services directory is intended to house service classes for your code. This is just a default and placement of service classes is often very subjective since service classes are so broad overall. Use this directory if you'd like a good default on how to start out and feel free to create your own namespaces if you feel that'll make more sense for you in the future. Now finally back up to the HTTP directory, this is where the part of your app specific to the HTTP layer lives. You may be wondering what all that entails. Well, think of how your app communicates with the web. A request comes in, hits the router, the router will then dispatch to a specific closure or controller method based on a matching route. It'll hit a filter or a middleware if any are set up and run before or after the dispatcher executes the action. And then it'll return the response back to the server. As such, this directory contains a controllers, middleware, and this request directory, which is responsible for containing Laravel 5's form request feature. If you hadn't been following along with some of the changes from L4, filters have gradually been getting turned into more of a middleware than a standalone feature. So now they get their own directory. The kernel file you see here is the one responsible for declaring these middleware for the application. And then finally at the bottom, we'll see the good old routes file, which should look very similar to L4. Now that we've read through all of the directories, I'm sure you're wondering where the models directory is. Well, this is it. The app directory is the default home for your models. You can certainly create subdirectories to better group your classes together, like the services directory does, but by default, Laravel considers anything under the app directory as your application. Your domain logic and models can live wherever you tell them to live. Whatever your app defines as the same default will be where you can place these objects whether they're eloquent models, service classes, entities, repositories, or any other generic object. For example, the user model Laravel provides is sitting right here directly under app. You can always move this to another nested directory if you'd like, maybe under a directory with your own namespace. As you'll notice, the namespace app is declared at the top. This is true of all classes under the app directory now. Before in Laravel 4, it gave you the directories under app like controllers and models as global level namespaces, which are the root of PSR 0 and 4. Now you must specify the namespaces on all of your files. However, maybe instead of following my advice from a few seconds ago regarding creating your own namespace in a subdirectory, we could just change the app namespace to be the namespace you want. Well, Laravel completely allows for this. Simply go to the command line and type in php artisan app name, and we'll call it my app. 
and Laravel will set this as your default namespace for the app directory. So I think that pretty much brings you up to speed on the new directory structure and namespacing. You may feel a little overwhelmed at first, but pretty soon you'll probably be wondering why you've never done this in the past. Just give it time and be open to change, and I think you'll find the benefits quite quickly.